1960s was an age, a decade of revolution, socially and politically. It was a very volatile time. And in this series, The Private Life of Cosmonauts, Jacqueline de Jong makes that palpable in her, in her paintings. First, the irony of the private life of a cosmonaut. There was no private life. The cosmonaut represented a nation, but at the same time was a lonely individual without any gravity, looking for his place in space. I say his because it was a male-dominated cosmonaut world. Um, at the time these paintings were made, we were in the middle of major social change. This was the Cold War. There was the space race. Who was going to be the first to reach the moon? Would it be the Soviet Union or the United States? There was the Cuban Missile Crisis. John F. Kennedy was assassinated. The Vietnam War was raging. After these paintings were done, there was the 1968 uprising in Paris. There was the assassination of uh, Martin Luther King, the legendary Woodstock concerts, and um, the, the landing on the moon. So you see that these works really portray the feelings of the time, the feelings of being alienated and changing without any gravity, the cosmonauts floating, the psychedelic references to the hippie culture and youth culture also floating, looking for their place. So there's two things that are happening. There's one is the, the conquering of the space, of the sky, and the other one, the conquering of the bodies, the sexual liberation, the youth and hippie culture. And we see these in these smaller sections of the, of the painting. In 2020, Jacqueline de Jong created this painting behind me, Tourelure, which is Dutch for cracking up, going crazy. She made this in her apartment in Amsterdam, where she had just installed a lift. And this lift gave her the feeling of claustrophobia in the, during the lockdown. And this made her even more aware of the situation that was happening in the world with the refugee crisis. It's entitled Borderline, and borderline not from the psychiatric uh, perspective, but borderline in terms of a division line separating one area from another. The human refugee crisis, whether it's in Venezuela, Syria, Ukraine, or Somalia, is dealing with the same human emotions of fear and displacement. And in this work, which could be a reference to perhaps Moria on the island of Lesbo, where there was a fire in the refugee camp, we have a feeling of confinement. We have a space in the middle that's black and white, symbolizing the lack of life. A figure inside, which is also trapped within a box, statue-like. The feeling of claustrophobia, a door is open, but it leads to a dead end. On the outside, we have two prominent figures. This side, a female figure that's hunched and bleeding, held down by barbed wire and going up in flames at the same time, a reminder of the tragedies in the refugee camps. On the other side, we have an overly large male figure, an erect penis, which is a sign of potence and vitality. We have an airplane on the head, which is almost helmet-like, a machine of war and the stuck out tongue, which Asker Jorn uh, did research about, uh, the tongue a symbol of language, not speech, in defiance and mockery. There's a lot of emotional energy in this work, especially in the time of the lockdown where this global pandemic made us all aware of how it is to have our freedom stripped and not be able to cross a line, not be able to leave one's personal space or travel into another country. So this piece, we're looking at it not just from a voyeuristic perspective, but we have, because of our global pandemic experience, a more an emotional attachment to this work.
The Situationist International was a post-war radical anti-capitalist movement made up of bohemian artists and theorists. Their goal was to break the constraints of everyday life, which was moving towards a more consumer-oriented direction. They felt this led to false hopes and apathy. Jacqueline de Jong, who was 21 at the time, was a member of the group and leader of the Dutch section. In 1962, all the artists were expelled. The Situationalist International, which was moving in a more theoretical direction, questioned the role of art and artists within the group. Paintings were seen as commercial objects and the Spoor Group in Germany helped fund their Situationalist International Journal through funds made through selling artworks to a collector. This was perceived as anti-capitalist. As a response, de Jong created, edition, edited, and published one of the most intelligent journals of its time, the English language Situationalist Times, which we see here on the wall. The Situationalist journals, the sixth edition, the first two really focused on her colleagues and peers, the German group Spur, who were in a court battle process and who she was defending. And then it moves on to a thematic that was crucial to the Situationalist International, that of topology in the form of knots or labyrinths. And finally, at the end, contemporary artists in the Paris scene of the time. The atrocities and the horrors of war can be seen here in this series done by Jacqueline de Jong in 2013-2014. She is portraying two wars that she's threaded together, the First World War and the Syrian Civil War. Because they're done in pastel, they have a, a visual that is somewhat soft, nebulous. We have elements of the First War which are, are visible through the gas mask, skeletons, just the, the horror. They have the, the burqa, the, the Syrian war. And in fact, this piece could be a contemporary piece showing what's happening in the Ukraine right now. And what brings these two together, what connects these wars, in addition to the violence and the brutality and the death, is the use of chemical weapons. The 1925 Geneva Convention forbid the use of chemical weapons, yet Assad used this on his people. In these two works, that first appearance, it seems almost like a landscape, it has something soft due to the coloring. It's textural, it's somewhat abstract. But what we're looking at is a portrayal of the aftermath of a gas attack in Syria and in Belgium. We have a male, male naked figure on his side, the arm on the hip, the male genitalia after being attacked with gas. And this is about the death of the individual and the broader sense of death in the terms of the possibility for no further reproduction. Dutch artist Jacqueline de Jong, born in 1939, played an important role in the male-dominated post-war European avant-garde. In her first German retrospective, the Museum of Art in Ravensburg is showing over 80 works of art, including paintings, sculptures, publishings, and prints. Her artistic path, her personal path, really began in 1961 when she moved to Paris and embraced the cultural and revolutionary movements of the time. In these works behind me, selected from two series, the accidental paintings and the suicidal paintings, we see the influence of Asker Jon and the Cobra group, but we see her own personal statement coming through in a direction that's moving towards pop art. At first, the cartoon-like figures the bright colors, the, the wild gestural strokes give the impression of something humorous. But upon the second viewing, one is confronted with a darker theme, and that narrative is that of violence, 
brutality and eroticism juxtaposed and intertwined with one another. These images are based on personal experiences and on the mass media that was prevalent at the time. She shows the human emotions in its whole spectrum. These themes, the humor, the violence, the eroticism, continue throughout her entire oeuvre spanning over 60 years. <laughs>